How's it going guys? In today's video we're going to be looking at how we can create selectable buttons in SwiftUI and this is more of a custom implementation because I haven't found anything that can achieve this through native elements. So I went ahead and just combined all of my logic together to create this sample application over here. So pretend you want to only select one button and you want to make sure the user selects something before they move on. You can go ahead and implement this and it's going to look like this. So, so far it's just going to highlight the button and if you decide to click another button, it's going to highlight the next button but you can never select both at the same time. And you can even unselect it and reselect it. And if you click on yes, it's going to toggle that. And if we click on submit, it's going to say it's a correct answer. Otherwise, if you click on no, it's going to say nope. So of course you can handle that to take in as many buttons as you want. So you can even create a quiz app with these buttons. And let's just go ahead and get started by creating a new project in Xcode. And here I'm going to go ahead and change it to an iPhone 13 and minimize this sidebar. And as always, we're going to resume it so we can see the iPhone actually render. Amazing. So, so far we have an iPhone. Now we can go ahead and right click on our folder over here and create a new file. And this is going to be a Swift UI view. So just go ahead and select that and click on next. We're going to call this one here select button and we can resume the preview inside here. Now inside the struct, we want to go ahead and create a binding variable, which is going to take the variable of is selected of type Boolean. Under that, we need to go ahead and create a state of the var caller. So we can select the caller we want the button to be and just provide the caller. And finally, we want to make sure that the user can insert custom text. So we will create a text var and it's going to be of type string. Now Swift UI is going to give us a lot of errors because the preview is going to require all of these since we did not specify them in this top section. So to get rid of that error immediately, we can go ahead and first provide is selected, which is going to be a constant value of false initially. And as for the caller, I just want it to be of dot blue. And then the text can just say option. So now we have no errors down here and we can resume with the body. So first we're going to go ahead and create a Z stack followed by a capsule. And it's going to have a frame of a height of 50. And the foreground caller is going to take is selected. And if it is selected, we're going to provide the caller. Otherwise, we're going to provide dot gray. Below that, we want to go ahead and add some text, which is just going to be the text from above, dot foreground caller, dot white. So it's a very simple button. And if you go to the constant and say true, it's going to change to blue. So that's what's happening so far. That's the whole concept behind this button. But now that we have a button here, we can go ahead and open our content view and close the sidebar. So to make this app function, the first thing we want to do is create four state variables. So the first one is at state private var is selected, which is going to be set to false initially. Then at state private var is selected to, and that will also be set to false. Then we want to go ahead and create a show alert variable which will be set to false and that will control the state of the alert and a state private var alert text. So we can change that freely. So immediately below that, we can go ahead and create a V stack, which will have a spacing of 30. And we're going to provide a padding at the bottom. Now we can go ahead and provide some text, which will say, is this an important question? for example, and inside we can go ahead and provide an H stack so we can add the buttons to select. So the first button is going to be a select button. And as I mentioned earlier, we need to provide some parameters to make this work. So first we need to provide is selected followed by the caller and the text. And I'm going to format it like this so it's easier to read. So first we'll start here and insert a binding variable of is selected. Then the caller, which I just want to be blue, so dot blue, and the text, which will be whatever text you want. And in this example, it's going to say yes. 
And below this, we need to go ahead and provide an on tap gesture. So on tap gesture, and if is selected, then we just want to make sure that is selected to is false. So that we can only have one option highlighted at a time. Of course, if you add a lot of these, you're going to have to make a more complicated check, but it's a very simple way to do this. And one more thing, if you're going to make this multiple choice, this is going to be a lot easier because you do not have to deselect the other buttons. And also before I forget, we have to go ahead and toggle is selected. So is selected dot toggle. Now, if we actually go ahead and do a live preview, you're going to notice that we can click on the button and deselect it, but nothing's happening so far. So we need to go ahead and add some more code. So now we can go ahead and copy this selectable button, place it right below and edit it. So it's going to be a dot red as the caller. The text is going to say no. And we're going to toggle is selected to. And if is selected to is true, then we're going to turn is selected to false. I definitely recommend making your variable names much more concise than this, because this can be very confusing very fast, especially if you have more buttons. But for the purpose of this tutorial, we're just going to keep it as this. And right below the H stack, so right here, we're going to go ahead and include a button. So button, which is going to have the text of submit. And inside here, we're going to go ahead and type in alert text. And this will change depending on if is selected is true or false. So if is selected is true, which means button number one is true, we can go ahead and say correct answer. Else, we're just going to say nope. And then we want to go ahead and type in show alert dot toggle because we want to show the alert with the result. And to do that, we need to go ahead and type in dot alert which is going to take the alert text and is presented is going to be bound to the show alert binding variable. And we just need to specify one button, which isn't going to do anything in this scenario. But of course, you can add your own code. And it's going to be called continue. So add your code here. And with that being done, we can go ahead and live preview the app once again. If we click on Nope, nothing's going to happen because I did something wrong. Ah, so as always, I missed a very important detail. And that is we need to go to select button number two and bind it to the is selected to binding variable. But now if we go back to the app, we can click on no, we can click on yes, and it's going to alternate. And if we click on submit, it will give us the correct answer. If we click on nope, it's going to say nope. And yeah, we're able to select buttons. It's really nice. It's very simple. And as always, guys, with that being said, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.